Hi my friends. So today I'm going to talk to you about why I have decided to have the partial hysterectomy. So if that is of interest to you, make sure to keep watching this video. If you've already watched some of my other videos, you already know that I have been managing my heavy periods through the use of herbal remedies. And I will make sure to link those videos down below. But at this point in time, now in February of 2023, I have decided to go ahead with the partial hysterectomy option that is available to me. So the reason why I have decided to go ahead with the surgery is because back in early December of 2022, I experienced the most god-awful period that I, that I couldn't even imagine it. So just super briefly to let you know about my medical history or my experience with having a period. So um, I did not start to have really heavy, crazy periods until just a couple of years ago. And I didn't really fully appreciate how horrible they can be and how long the effects from a really bad period can stay with you. So just to keep a long story short, back in early December, I had a very, very heavy period where I lost a lot of blood in a very short period of time. So over the course of about two to three days, I lost enough blood basically to make me now still register as anemic um, almost three months later. So if that gives you an idea of the ordeal that I went through back in December, then maybe you already know <laughs> why I have decided to go ahead with the partial hysterectomy. So um, I had been avoiding it this you know surgery that I'm going to have now because I did think like I said before I had very normal and manageable periods my entire life and so I did not have an understanding of how bad they could be and because I did not have any um, like reference information basically of how bad a period can be um, I thought that I could just kind of like until I hit menopause I could just that I could just go ahead and continue managing uh, the periods with the herbal remedies and so they did work for a while but unfortunately um, after my experience back in December I feel like I have to take <laughs> I have to take the permanent solution in order to um, just basically improve the quality of my life. So I just um, visited with my doctor, my OBGYN slash my surgeon a couple of days ago. Um, and we talked about the option that I have to have the laparoscopic partial hysterectomy and for those of you who don't know what that is because that's like saying a lot in a very short few words so laparoscopic means that the doctor is going to use a basically like a robot um, to perform the surgery I will have I think four small and I mean like small incisions in my abdomen instead of like when a lady has a c-section where they have to like cut your entire abdomen it's not like that it's much less invasive um so that's what the laparoscopic part means and partial hysterectomy means that in my case it means something different for you know different ladies but in my case it means that she will take my uterus fallopian tubes and cervix but leave my ovaries she is leaving my ovaries because technically i'm still very young <laughs> um and she does not want to send me into surgical menopause, as they call it. So the ovaries are there to continue to give my body the hormones that it needs to keep functioning, not only for um, sexual and the health of your 
you know, your lady experience. But she also told me that the hormones that the ovaries produce will also continue to protect my heart and my bones, which I did not know that. That was something new to me. So that was really interesting to learn. So my ovaries, um, you know, perfectly fine. So those will be left there. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the, let's see how I have my notes right here. I have 10, I'm gonna share with you the 10 reasons why I have decided to go ahead and choose this surgery. So I'm going to try to keep it a bit brief and kind of move quickly, but if you have any questions or anything or um, you want to follow along with me as I go through this process, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video so the YouTube algorithm knows that I'm trying to help other people and so it'll be shown to other pe other women as well. And if for some reason you're a man watching this, hello, hey, how y'all doing? Welcome to the channel. If you are a guy watching this, um, just know that you are welcome to subscribe too because this is just a small part of the wellness content that I make. I make lots of content about mental health, relationships, dealing with your boss, all this kind of good stuff. So it's not just a period channel. <laughs> it's, you know, we're wel I'm welcoming everybody who would want to consume my content. So make sure you subscribe. And I also have a wellness newsletter that you can subscribe to down below that is available through my website so without further ado let me talk about it so the first reason why I'm choosing to have this partial hysterectomy is because my quality of life is hella poo it is hella poo p-o-o -O, poo poo y'all and let me tell you why so um, a couple of days ago when I got my blood work done and a couple of days ago is the first time I was able to get in touch with you to see my doctor in person since my experience back in December. And so she ordered some blood work. I, you know, went and did the blood work and I am officially anemic. I was not before, even though I had had some bad periods. Um, but that last one in December just really took me out and I'm still feeling the effects now, almost in March. So I am officially anemic and if you are anemic, you already know probably what I'm going to say, but anemia really affects your energy and I not being able to, you know, do things the way that I was able to before is very sad. So I'll talk about that in a little bit, but basically I am anemic according to my blood work. I still get winded and experience high heart rate, a high heart rate. So if you've lost a lot of blood before, then you know that the body, it takes time for the body to rebuild the, you know, remake the blood, right? And unless you have a transfusion, I think, but I didn't. So my body is just naturally, slowly trying to replace what it lost. And right now, depending on the activity that I do, I still get, um, a pretty high heart rate when I exert myself, even if I'm not really what I would consider exerting myself, my heart rate still tends to get pretty high and um, I am getting better and I'm trying to stay very positive, but it is a lasting effect that has been very scary for me. So that's part of you know, my quality of life not being great in my opinion. So the second reason is that I currently just live in fear of when my next period will come. And you can probably imagine why, right? Um, so right now I live alone and back in December, it was just really terrifying to be going through losing that much blood in such a very short period of time and not having anyone around um, to just immediately be there to help me. And because, like I said before, I had never experienced that bad of a period, I didn't know that I didn't know what like what was going to happen. I didn't know if I needed to go to the ER. I didn't know if it was just gonna be one day or 
or what. I didn't know how to make the decision to try to get to a friend's house or to call somebody because I just had no idea that it was going to be that bad. So living alone and not knowing exactly how to manage my symptoms, were, it was very scary for me. So yeah, living alone in this case is not that great. Um, but you know what? I remain hopeful to find a partner. So if you know someone who is interested in a woman who has lost a lot of blood, but none of her sense of humor, tell him to call me. And even though I lost that much blood, I mean, it is true. I still have a little bit of hair and some boobs. So there you go, and the sense of humor. All right, so the third reason why I've decided to go ahead and have the partial hysterectomy is because I live in fear of stress. Oh my God, this is terrible. So I believe one of the main contributors of um, my experience with the heavy periods is related to stress. So I am a naturally anxious person, and even though through connecting the dots between stressful situations and heavy periods, even though I've been able to connect those dots and I'm much, much more, um, I'm much, much more, what is the word, cognizant, aware of the stress that I, that I, even like subject myself to, I'm still alive in 2023 with all this crazy existence going on. So I still get stressed out. I meditate, I journal, all this, you know, I drink the tension tamer tea, all the stuff, but I'm still a human being, right? So sometimes I get stressed out and when I get stressed out, I am afraid that whenever my period comes, it'll be heavy. And so I have this kind of like undercurrent of fear related to my period and how it'll be related to the amount of stress that I've been under in the days and weeks leading up to when the period comes. So that fear, I am tired of feeling that. That it's just, that is a really big um, negative kind of aspect of what my quality of life is like right now and I am tired of dealing with that and I'm sure you can relate. But I think that I do want to share a good thing about what happened to me in December and related to stress because I have connected those dots between stressful situations and the heavy, heavier periods. Because I have made that connection, I am now absolutely ruthless when it comes to people and situations that um, used to stress me out. I am ruthless. I do not, you know, I don't participate. I have really started to limit the contact that I used to have with people in situations that would stress me out. At work, I still get my work done. I'm still like a really great employee, but I basically have severed the amount of emotion that I used to experience in connection to frustrations at work. So that's a really good, you know, part of experiencing that I wish I didn't have to feel like I was bleeding to death to finally say hey you know F all of this I'm not doing this anymore but it is what it is so at least I can see some positive in what happened to me so the fourth reason why I decided to go ahead with the partial hysterectomy surgery is my periods are highly irregular so um, a couple of years ago when my period started to, you know, get a little wonky, um, I was still able to at least somewhat know, sometimes know when my period would come. But now there's just no telling. It's like shooting dice in Vegas. It's like pulling the handle on the, on the casino thing. You know, like who knows? Who knows? It's like trying to tell the weather and the year is 1654. Who knows? Good luck. We don't know. I don't know. And that is stressful because 
I, because I live in fear of when the period will come and because I live in fear of how stress will affect the period, so this is like living in fear of when the period will come and also how the period will come. It's a lot going on. And I have not been able to shake that. I go to therapy, I do the journaling, I have the, the affirmation cards, all the things. But when you go through something alone that is so traumatic, I feel like I just have to show myself some grace when it comes to still feeling that fear. And I have to be honest, I still feel the fear. So it is what it is, but my period is very irregular. And because it's irregular, I don't feel like I can, like I have enough like knowledge or understanding to even help myself in the time leading up to my period because I don't know when she's coming. So there you go. Reason number five, let's continue. Reason number five is I'm just tired of this shit. I excuse the language. If you're a young lady watching this, I hope you are at the point in your life when you're using cuss words because I'm just tired of this shit. I'm tired of it. Sorry if that offends you. I'm just sick of it. So, um, I have had a period since I was nine years old. I've had a period so long that I don't even really remember what it is like to not have a period. And I am now 40 years old. So I am just over the whole experience of menstruating. I'm over it. Like I've paid my dues. It's been a long time and I don't want to do this anymore. And now that the periods are crazy, they come when they want and I'm stressed out about it and I live in fear. My quality of life has changed. I'm anemic, all this stuff. I really am just like editing Nicole. Please insert that meme of Jonah Hill doing this because I'm tired of it. Reason number six. The supplements are kind of expensive. So um, the supplements are kind of expensive. They can be like $100 to $200 a month. Life is very expensive right now. I have other financial goals that I'm trying to achieve, blah, blah, blah. And so also just remembering to take them every day. And there's there are quite a few of them that I take. It's just a hassle. And I would like to just be done with the supplements. Um, I'm still gonna take supplements for, you know, general health, other health conditions and stuff, but the, I'm just tired of like it being a constant consideration in my mind with keeping up with the supplements that I specifically take for my menstrual health. Number seven is other health problems related to either bleeding or losing a lot of blood at in a short amount of time like what happened to me so i have uh two two or two or three big ones so first so i have a condition called adenomyosis and basically what happens is your uterus the tissue of your uterus becomes spongy so you think of like a dish sponge right and it absorb, it kind of like engorges itself on blood. And then when you have your period, there's so much blood like kind of stuck in the tissue that you pass a lot of blood, you lose a lot of blood, your bleeding is very intense and heavy. And also, um, I experienced a lot of blood clots, huge blood clots, it was horrible. So, that, as I've already said, contributed to me becoming anemic, but also when my uterus is, I guess, like becoming engorged, I start to have much more sciatic pain, so lower back pain and sciatic pain down my left, for me it's my left side. I don't experience incontinence, but I feel like I have to pee and then I'll go pee and then five minutes later I feel like I have to pee and my doctor did tell me that while she can't guarantee it those two other health conditions um, my 
basically my uterus could be getting so engorged that um, it's leaning against my bladder or it may be leaning against either my sciatic nerve or another organ that's touching that nerve and making those things worse. So not fun having the sciatic pain and then going through the period and all blah, 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 all this stuff, all these extra things going on. I'm over it. I'm so over it. So number seven, other health problems. Number eight, so my physical appearance. So um, after I lost so much blood in such a short amount of time, I don't know if other people noticed, maybe not because I really tried to not take pictures and I was so tired and just so wiped out for so long that there are no pictures of me that exist uh, during like right after that time. but. I, under my eyes, got like dark. And then even though I am obviously a black person, to me, I look pale. I feel like if I was a fair skinned person, people would have been like, are you okay? Are you, are you dying? Girl, mm, you need to get checked out. Because I looked, I looked like I had been drained of blood. Like I felt, very corpsey. It's, I felt like casket ready, but not because of a lot of makeup. I felt horrible. And I looked horrible. I already have, you know, not like the highest self-esteem because I'm, I weigh more than I want to weigh right now. And so then looking in the mirror and also seeing like this, you know, <laughs> corpsey kind of face, sad and so I don't want to deal with that anymore so that's kind of a vain reason but that is my reason number eight all right we're almost to the finish line y'all let's talk about what I was just mentioning number nine is energy low energy lack of energy for the period from hell back in December I had gotten into a good routine of going to the gym and working out and stuff I had lost maybe about seven to eight pounds I just kind of started and now as we are close to March is when I am finally able to kind of start back going to the gym last week i was able to go three times but i have to take it really slow because when i start to exert myself even though it's better than it was before I, my heart rate gets up really high very quickly with much less effort than it used to and also some days i'm just kind of like curiously tired and I did not experience that before. I was kind of to the point where I knew when, you know, what things made me tired and all this stuff. And now my energy levels and my ability to, you know, kind of do like cardio heavy type things is not even back to where it was. So that's very discouraging. And I just don't want to deal with that anymore, you know. And just one thing about going to the gym. So right now I'm not lifting heavy weights or anything like that yet. I am just going to the gym to walk. And you might be like, well, Nicole, why don't you just go outside and walk? I don't go outside and walk because I also still get overheated very quickly. So my logic is that if I go to the gym and walk around, if I if something happens, if I pass out or something, there will be people nearby who can help me. Whereas in a neighborhood, somebody might see me, they might not. So having that as a consideration and a fear also, it bumps me out, it makes me sad, it makes me feel like I'm not as free as I was before. For. And so those types of things, um, you know, all related to quality of life really make me just ready to shoot the deuce to my uterus. Bye uterus. All right. And so the last reason is that according to my doctor who told me this before, before December, um, the condition adenomyosis doesn't really get better. You go, you eventually go through menopause and that cures it i think but 
I don't know how long I have until I go through menopause. Right now I am 40 years old, but who knows when I'm gonna go through menopause. So playing a waiting game of when I'll feel better in all of the possible years that I'll lose to all of these, you know, fears and things and the lessened quality of life, it's not something that I'm interested in. So I, for me, the partial hysterectomy is going to be a good option, I believe. I'm hopeful. I am doing everything that I'm supposed to do to prepare my body. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it gave you some things to think about in case you are considering it. Some of the videos that I've watched before, the women are just like, I'm having a hysterectomy, it's gonna be great, blah, 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 blah. And I always wanted to know, aside from, you know, just the bleeding, what, like what was the point where she was like, no thank you, I don't wanna do this anymore. So that's why I decided to make this video and share my 10 reasons why I am deciding to go ahead with the surgery. Oh, if you are considering a hysterectomy or you've already had one, make sure to comment down below, share your experience. I read every single comment. I reply to the comments. I would love to hear from you. Like I said before, if you'd like to go along with me on my journey as I go through this experience of continuing to prepare my body for the surgery, going through the surgery, and then the post-op recovery and all that stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if none of this period stuff is interesting, Interesting to you still subscribe because I make fire content about wellness in general all aspects of your wellness so I would love to have you over here on the YouTube channel and and I would love to be in your inbox I'm just gonna say it I would love to send you a newsletter let me do it thank you very much find those links down below and until next time my friends oh May you feel well and not have the period from hell. Gosh, Ugh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Until then, next, until next time, my friends, take care and namaste.